Hello everyone, and welcome to my General Hospital Today channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Eva tells Austin too much about Sunny, and Joss and Christina butt heads. Today on General Hospital, Eddie and Olivia make headway, Molly and TJ take a significant stride, and Dex counsels Trina about Curtis. Ava arrives at the hospital and requests to speak with Austin through a nurse. The nurse informs her that he is with a patient, so she decides to wait. Dex discovers Trina in the waiting room. He reveals that Sunny asked him to check on Curtis. She has no idea because he refuses to see her. Dex is aware that he is not Joss, but he offers to listen as she needs to talk. She believes it might be beneficial to speak with someone else. Trina reveals she didn't want a DNA test after learning Curtis was her father and that Marcus was her sole father. Dex inquires as to what has changed. She describes how Curtis was so brave in Greenland that she decided to take a test to find out the truth. Trina claims that things went strange with Marcus and she began bonding with Curtis, but she pushed him away when something happened with which she disagreed. She believes she has broken their tie but Dex disagrees. When it comes to safeguarding individuals you care about, he approaches the situation as a soldier might. He believes it must be hurting Curtis that he can't be her protector right now. Trina does not require protection, but he believes Curtis may disagree. He encourages her to let Curtis know she's there for him, but to allow him some space. She realizes she should definitely cease hanging out in this waiting room. He offers to accompany her out. Austin calls Curtis, who has turned down the physical therapist. Curtis explains that he wasn't into it. Austin emphasizes that it's a vital aspect of his treatment, and if he didn't already know, he'll be heading to a rehab facility after he leaves here. Curtis thinks about all that has happened and throws his phone across the room just as Stella walks in. Stella informs Curtis that she spoke with Portia, and he anticipates her response. God never gives us more than we can handle. She simply expresses her regret and hugs him. Curtis apologizes, but she claims he didn't do anything wrong and was simply in the wrong place at the wrong time. She offers to assist him in whatever manner she is able. Curtis claims that neither she nor anyone else can help. Stella disagrees, since Curtis has a family who loves him, supports him, and will guide him through this difficult time. Curtis sobs because he can't walk, run, or dance. Curtis claims he is no longer the man he once was and will never be again. Ava approaches Austin when he returns to his workplace. She chastises him for not responding to her texts. He explains that he has patience, and she replies he has one less now that Gordon has been discovered dead. Austin says he heard what happened and regrets it. According to Ova, it was murder, not a heart attack. Austin says he's already spoken with Chase and has no knowledge of Gordon's death. Oh my God, you killed him, didn't you? Says Ava. Austin claims he didn't, that he couldn't, and that he felt she knew better. Ava knows nothing about him, but Austin believes she knows him better than anyone in a long time. He claims Mason and the individuals he works for are the type of people that could harm Gordon. Austin has been paged and must leave. Ava tells her to hurry back since she still has questions. Ava snoops about his office and goes through his files while she is alone. She searches for Gordon's file. Austin checks in with Curtis again, and Stella remains with him. Austin goes over his release procedures and transfer to the rehab center, but he assumes Portia has already discussed everything with him. Curtis says to Stella after Austin leaves that he doesn't think he can do it. Stella knows he's been through more trials than any man should have to face, and she's seen him win over each one. He says this is different, and she agrees. She finally kisses him farewell and walks away. Curtis shakes and hits his legs alone, but feels nothing. Austin returns and discovers Ava rummaging through his files, for which he threatens to have her imprisoned. Ava claims that there is no documentation on Gordon, implying that he was never his patient, who was he? She wonders if Mason was obliged to treat Gordon. Austin admits to doing so. 
Ava wonders if Gordon approached him while they were out with Sonny and Nina. Austin becomes concerned and asks whether she has spoken to Sonny about Gordon. She hasn't, but he is worried that Sonny already doesn't trust him, which will make matters worse. She assures him that it will not happen because Sonny knows she assisted him. He asks, surprised, if she told Sonny about Nicholas. Cody has difficulty carrying hay bales at the Quartermain stables owing to his wound and recognizes he has to rest. He is taken aback when he discovers Brooke Lynn feeding the horses. She claims to be hiding from her grandmother and father. She suggests that he sit because he appears to be about to fall over. He confesses that he probably returned to work too soon and sits down. She offers him water and inquires as to how seriously Sasha injured him. He claims she was not wicked enough to be put to Ferncliff. Brooklyn claims Sasha lost contact with reality and became violent for the second time. Brooklyn believes Sasha belongs in Ferncliff, but Cody disagrees. He wonders if Sasha relapsed and was back on drugs, or if she had been drugged without realizing it. Brooklyn is aware that he is attempting to excuse Sasha's troubles, but she has a history of mental illness, which they cannot ignore. Even if she wasn't drugged, Cody believes whatever happened to her began with Gladys. She inquires as to why he is so distrustful of Gladys. Cody screams about selling Brando's garage and framing him for stealing the bracelet. She understands, but Gladys genuinely adores Sasha. She realizes it is late and that she needs to go going. Cody phones Fancliff alone to find out visiting hours, only to be told he's not on the list, which Gladys created and approved. Olivia bumps into Eddie in the Q's kitchen and greets him a happy afternoon. He can't believe it's already midday. She claims that if he didn't remain out all night, he might not miss half of the day. He doesn't expect that to change anytime soon, but he does appreciate the meal. He also tested the ravioli she sent to Sonny's and thinks she should create her own restaurant. She co-owns one and provides cook notes, although she prefers to cook for her family. She claims her Nona wanted her to learn her recipes, but she was a wild youngster in school who was always getting into mischief. Etty wonders why she skipped school and went to the mall. Olivia claims that's for babies, and she and her closest friend Lois were smoking and sneaking into nightclubs, causing havoc. He claims she was having a fantastic time back then. She claims she became pregnant and had to give up those days in order to raise her son. He believes she misses her wild party days. She does on sometimes, but she does not regret giving them up for her son. Eddie inquires as to which clubs Olivia used to frequent, and Olivia cites a few. He inquires about phony IDs, but she says that's only for amateurs. She claims that they made friends with all of the bouncers. Brooklyn walks in and notices them smiling at each other. She too smiles. Esm, Ace, Spencer, and arrive at Kelly's to discover Joss working for the day. Christina arrives and greets baby Ace, introducing herself as her cousin and saying it's lovely to meet him. Christina speaks briefly with Joss and says that she could always work at Charlie's. According to Joss, that's where Sonny travels with Nina, so it's a no-go. Christina nods and goes away. Essen questions Spencer about why Joss and Christina don't appear to like each other. Joss butts in and adds that if she has any questions about her, she should ask her. Spencer claims it is not a state secret, Christina supports Sonny, and Joss supports Carly. Joss returns to work, and Essen tells Spencer that Christina treats her like a human, which she appreciates. Ace grows agitated, so Mom chooses to return him to daycare. Spencer enters the kitchen and apologizes to Joss for telling Esme about her problems with Christina. She claims it's fine. Spencer claims Esme informed her that Christina is the only person who treats her like a human, and he pity her. Joss is aware that Esme has lost her memories, but she and Trina have not, making it difficult to be around Esme. She inquires if it is not difficult for him. He acknowledges it's become easier, and Ace assists, but Trina is his top priority. Joss is perplexed as to why he isn't with her. Molly and TJ meet with Claire Brown, a surrogacy specialist, at their house. Claire inquires if this is their first visit with a specialist, which Molly confirms. 
She inquires whether they want a gestational surrogacy or a traditional surrogate. Molly understands that a traditional surrogate provides the egg and carries the baby, but a gestational surrogate uses a donor egg. The woman inquires whether they have considered having someone donate an egg. Christina walks in, ranting about Joss being such a jerk. Molly brings Christina to Claire Brown, a surrogate specialist. Molly praises TJ and Christina and tells them she'll leave them and text Molly later. Claire later reveals that some couples choose to utilize a family member's egg, but Molly prefers a formal surrogate. Claire says she'll compile a list of surrogates for them to consider and interview. She thinks it was good meeting them, and they appear to know what they want, so this will go well. TJ follows Claire out. TJ inquires of Molly what she believes. Molly considers herself fortunate to be in this boot because she would have throttled Christina. TJ observes that Christina has a habit of turning up at the wrong time, but Molly believes it was the right time. Molly had considered asking Christina to donate an egg, but she now knows that would complicate matters. She believes that using a surrogate egg would be preferable. TJ assures her that she will be the mother of their child no matter what. She accepts knowing Claire will find them the ideal mother to carry their child. Spencer returns to Kelly's and talks with Joss at the bar. Spencer explains that he is keeping his distance from Trina because Portia has stated that she does not want him near her kid. Joss advises she spend time away from Portia with Trina. Christina returns and says that's one choice, or he could go to the park with Ace and his mother. Spencer has plans with Trina, according to Joss, but Christina says that with her mother out of town, Esme can take the day off and they can take Ace to the park. Spencer declares that it is a gorgeous day and departs to meet up with Esme and his brother. Christina says to Joss, sorry. Thanks for watching if you like this video, so please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any update.